you know, in the world, we are building medical infrastructure in such a way that today all of us are expecting someday we will all be seriously ill. It need not be so. <laughs> if uh, you live with Narmadaji, it need not be so. <laughs> and not just her, there are many others. It need not be so if you know how to manage the elements, if not all of them. It's very easy to bring water and air into your control. These are two elements which are easily accessible. If you do this combination well and little conscious about what you consume, you will never go to the doctor. There was a time for the whole town there used to be one doctor and it was enough. Today every street has five doctors and it's not enough. This shows how we are living. When we forget how to live, when we do not respect what makes our life, the, the earth the, that we walk upon, air that we breathe, water that we drink, the very sky that holds us in place, when we have no respect and reverence for that, how they behave within us is very different. Today there is substantial scientific evidence to show that water has tremendous memory. If you just generate a thought looking at the water, the molecular structure of the water will change. Just a look, the molecular structure of the water will change. If you touch it, it will change. How you touch it is very important. So now for example, they're keeping it in a copper vessel with a flower on top of it. Because this is the god. What other god? If you don't drink water for one, one day, this is the only god. No other god, <laughs> isn't it? So, how you treat the water, the memory remains for a long period. So before we consume it or before it touches our body, how we treat the water changes the quality of everything in our system. This is a science we have always known, but today modern science has done enormous amount of experimentation on this. Now they're saying water is a liquid computer. The volume of memory and intelligence is carries by itself. It is a liquid computer, this is what they're saying, it's a fluid computer. We have always known this, what is called a stirt, why for one drop of water people go and stand in a temple, is because it has the memory of the divine, you want to take that into your system. If the deity is powerful and the water has touched the deity, it has the memory of the divine, you want that to enter your system. But being in a pure space like this, it's a blessing. If uh, it, there are certain ways with which you can be in the water, if one does that, every ailment, all chronic ailments will go. There are infectious diseases and chronic ailments. Infectious diseases are an invasion from outside. Other organisms are entering our body and troubling us. For this you need a doctor, you need warfare. You have to bomb them out. Chemical warfare is normally what we're doing. But over seventy percent of human ailments are self-help. We manufacture that within our system. This is simply because fundamentally the way we are treating the elements within ourselves and around ourselves. The so-called modern life has absolutely no reverence to the substances which make our life. The life-making material is being treated badly and we're expecting it'll behave well within us and it will not. So being here at Narmada, it's time we bring back this culture because it's gone a full circle. Now modern science is insisting that water, the way you treat it is the way it's going to behave within you. And we must learn to treat it well. If we want to be healthy, if we want to be well, if we want to be successful, if we want to be prosperous, for all these things it's important, the elements within you cooperate. If they don't cooperate, nothing will work. One simple thing you could do is uh, how you treat the water, at least the water that you consume. I know today everybody is drinking water from plastic bottles. If you keep it in a metal vessel, particularly copper or copper alloy, the very nature of the water will change. 
And uh, traditionally, I don't know if it's still maintained in this part of the country, but in southern India, even now it's pretty common in traditional homes where every day there is a puja for the water vessel. They will put uh, some vibhuti on it, some kumkum on it and this is a small arati for the thing because the water should… water has an enormous amount of memory, it remembers how you have treated and accordingly it will behave. This is something very simple, everybody can start. And as a part of this in Tamil Nadu, we've been encouraging people to use copper vessels, pure copper vessels where… because copper is such a… you know, it's… it's the best conducting metal and it energizes the water. Energizing, if you check the mole… I mean, if you check the chemical uh, composition, it'll not change. That is the beauty of it. It's only the molecular uh, structure of the water that will change. You might have experienced this, suppose you ever… is there a waterfall in Narmada anywhere? There's a waterfall. If the water is falling like let's say over twenty, twenty-five feet and just after the waterfall, if you just touch the water, you will find water is silky for touch. Have you noticed this? Because water implodes within itself and the molecular structure changes. The way it feels is different. Today, they have created what is called as impl water imploding machines. You can implode the water with a machine, it just churns it in a certain way and implodes it. It has been found that if you use water imploding machines, with ten percent of the water, you can grow the plants the same way as you're growing. The water consumption will come down. With ten percent of water, the plants will yield the same because the imploded water becomes silky and its ability to become a part of the plant system or tree is much, much better. So, if you're in agriculture, imploding machines can come. It's… Uh, some people have patented it in UK. We are trying to bring some machines and give the service to the local farmers in Tamil Nadu so that people can use imploded water and their water consumption in the fields will come down dramatically because how long you pump the water, electricity not being free these days, it gets very expensive for the farmer. If the amount of water he needs to pump on his field is much less, it'll make a big difference. For daily consumption, just a copper vessel, every day if you have something, if you light a lamp next to it, if necessary, just one flower, the very way the water behaves within you will change. And when before you consume just one, one moment of gratitude and reverence, because this is the material with which you're making your life, not with some unknown god. This is the material that makes your life every moment and how you treat it is very important in your emotion, in your thought, if you hold water as… If you… you don't even have to think Devi stuff, you just understand the reality. The fact of it is, without it you cannot survive, yes? Whatever is the basis of your survival, you bow down, isn't it? So the water, the food, just bringing that reverence, you will see the volume that you consume will also come down and the way it behaves within you will come down. If you don't catch an infection, if you treat these elements properly, as I said earlier, most probably you, would, you won't see a doctor's face unless you're one. <laughs>